Hello, hello, people of the internet. It's your boy, Skinny Penis, with another DD, uh, the Hayata. Finally, we're covering it. I mean, it's not so special that you had to cover it earlier, but I think it's interesting at the moment because they're supposedly removing it. I have no idea when they're going to remove it. Could be next patch, could be the, I don't know, five patches after. Uh, I, don't, I don't have a clue. But they're going to completely remove free XP ships, um, make them coal. And since there's already so much coal ships, and we already talked about it in the Alvaro video, and the Sherman whatever not video, um, it's... they're reaching a state where there's so much coal, or so many coal ships, commanders and modules, that you can't really get all of it, unless you're playing the game non-stop permanently, and probably also uh, switching steel to coal. So yeah, before the ship becomes coal, I would definitely advise you like not not even caring about how strong or weak it is I would definitely advise people to get the Hayata through free XP because it's extremely cheap um, the 2 million free XP are way cheaper than all the tier 10 research pure ships that are between 5 and 6 million free XP I think um, unless you have like multiple double time resets um, but anyways even if you double time reset there's like not only free XP involved there's also a lot of credits involved um, shit like that, or time if you regrind, um, if you don't use the free XP. So they're way more expensive, and uh, the coal ones are also like just becoming ridiculous at this point. How much coal you really need? Um, so yeah, I would, I would say get it before it's removed. Um, fuck the other tier nine ships, really. Like the only one you should get is uh, Groningen. Uh, that one is really good. Uh, the original Friesland. Uh, other than that, um, you can probably skip Aegir and Azuma, you're not missing out anything there. Like, if you want to uh, get an Azuma, rather get a Yoshino on tier 10, it's just better. Gets better armor, gets the Torps, uh, same guns, more HP. Um, but you don't get overmatched by, by a way smaller amount of ships. Uh, essentially, only 30mm really fucks you. Uh, the But Azuma gets already cucked by... Um, 406s everywhere, and those and as are even overmatchable by 380s. So, and you don't have twerps on the Asuma. So yeah, um, and Aegir is like I don't know tragedy. I, I don't think Aegir is worth it in any way, form or shape. So, uh, Mister and Mrs. Hayata, it's a hybrid between gearing and uh, Shema. That was also when it was kind of released. It was supposedly, or supposed to be a hybrid between those two ships, meaning. Uh, you have way better gun DPM than Shema, or your guns are better, they also turn faster and shit. Um, but you lack the torpedo reload and DPM. So overall you're more of a hybrid thing and uh, since it's more gun focused you obviously go for the gun spec again. Kinda, kinda what you should do. Yeah, the Minotaur should pop here. There's a DD in the cap, it's a Grozovoy or Shema. Thought maybe I could catch him around the islands here. I'm not really sure. And the Ohio, I thought he would cross here and I could torp him, but he is not, so I'm gonna go over to the other side. Though so the DD lost interest in capping. Mm -hmm. So wait, they have a Petra's a radar, Moscow Salem, Minnow Minno might be radar, I do not know. Salem is over there, Moskva is on the border, okay, so the Petra used the radar and the Moskva isn't covering the island line, so I'd probably go over to this flank, help out there. Oh wait, fucking submarine, dude. Piss off, dude, this shitty sub. Maybe I could go for the sub, really. If I remember correctly, the IGN depth charges are kinda nuts. Well, let's try that shit. If I die, I die. I'm not spotted. But I don't know what DD it is yet. Grozo or Shema. Grozo would be better, kind of. Don't have to really care about the Torps that much. The Shema's just gonna AFK Torp me the entire time. So, we have zero indication as to where the sub is. Well, he's probably updating my minimap position at the moment, which is obviously very nice. I think I'll drop depth charges here and just see if he's here. Oh no, actually we have an indication where he is, because he's oil slicking like a dumb dog. That is really good. 
I have speed boost up, so that's why I'm, by the way, chasing, because I am able to kind of catch up with him. I think he's trying to disengage on the rocks here. Can't believe it, dude. Where the fuck did the sub go? I don't know, man. I think he's disengaging into them, but like, since they left everything open here. I'm gonna that gap. They have. They have a clue, or they should have a clue, because I'm like. Hmm. I'm supposedly spotted on the minimap, or like, my m position is updated. Wait, it was a Grozovoy in the middle, but I have no clue where he went, so... Hmm. Questionable. Okay, the Moskva died, the Salem GK are kiting, the Ohio is half dead, the Petra and Borg are sitting on that rock AFK. I really don't know where to go to get any sort of fucking damage, dude. I swear to god. Ah, okay, well, the submarine spots my torpedoes, even though we can't spot the submarine, so yeah, that was a fucking waste of time. It was really a big waste. I'm a smoke here. Arm the Borg a bit. Hmm. Petra Raider, I can tank it. That's why I smoked here. Don't really give a shit. I've oh, got a fire at least, eh? That's something. Man, man, man. AFK Petro's on a rock in fucking randoms, dude, I swear to god. Yeah, he's missing at that range. On an Ayada. Now that's quite amazing. So, yeah, well, you're a hybrid, but you don't get the concealment, really. Uh, or a heal, so you have to still be very careful. It's like not o it's obviously not the best destroyer, otherwise people would advise you... Or would have advised you ten years ago to get it immediately. Um, interestingly, it got released together with Smaland. Uh, which is kind of nuts to think about those ships were considered kind of equally balanced or equally well balanced back in the days there. It's kind of really nuts. Um, but hey, um, it's not bad by any means. Um, these days the DPM of uh, DDs just is so increased that you can't really cheese a people anymore with Hayata. Like you can only cheese the original destroyers and uh, torpedo boats in general. Oh, fucking submarines. Oh, each shit loser. Oh, he's really up my ass, hold on. Oh, well, you should eat a double dick. I mean, I can go for him. He was underwater for like 10 years, so he should come up at some point. I can turn it around and probably run at him. Got some damage from our guns. That's nothing to brag about, really. I'll go for the sub again. The Grozovo is still unspotted running around somewhere, but he already got two kills. I think he got the kills on this flank, by the way. I can be a wee bit careful. Um, now, nah, you can like cheese destroyers with guns back Hayata because your alpha strike is pretty nuts. It's like the Shimmer gun, so the IGN uh, DD alpha, which is pretty nuts on, on HE. And you have better reload and faster turret traverse, so you can't really get caught out like you can in Shimmer because your turrets actually do turn. And on top of that, um, you have way better reload. I mean, look, 3-3 three, three base, and, I mean, Fearless Brawl on top, you have 3. Um, that's actually pretty good. That's pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. I don't even know what the fuck I'm doing here, to be honest. I have no clue. The petrol lives forever, obviously, because it's a fucking petrol. I guess I can drop depth charges here. I don't have, I don't have any clue where this guy is. Oh, he's spotting me now. Hmm. No, wait, that's the Shimmer running into me. Well, I mean, okay. Not sure as hell was easy. That's that's a good one. Hey, Petra's dead too. Wait, I'm still spotted. Does that mean the submarine is surfaced? By the way? Is that the Grozo? No, that's the Salem. <sighs> Let me go dark, dipshits. I'm awaiting the arrival of the GK. Can actually shoot something, eh? I'm also keeping the torps because uh, torpedo reload is obviously dog shit. <laughs> um, you really gotta 
really gotta get into a d decent position where it's decently likely that you hit Torps because if you send them like I did against the Borg and the Petro and it's fucking spotted, you're kinda cucked. Okay, that's pretty good. Good situation here. I'd say. He won't shoot me. You want to. Yeah. It's gonna take... Oh my god, his dispersion is actually kinda disgusting. Okay, bro. Okay, that's quite nuts. That is quite nuts. And he's behind the island, so I can't spot him anymore. Okay, that was that was fucking stupid. I admit that. I admit that. That was fucking stupid. We could see like three sh three oh wait he's still burning, okay, okay. I mean questionable if he has hydro up. Would be kinda cool to have a teammate here that helps me out spotting him. I think he has Hydra, but yeah, he's turning into base again. Bro, it's fucking unbelievable, man. Literally, eat a, eat a big fucking dick, dude. Man, these people are just too passive for my taste these days. I mean, the game is lost for him. Just fucking run it in with your stupid Hydra. But that's what the submarine is. Wow, amazing. Hey, okay, cool, dude. You see it on the minimap? Uh, he's towards A. Pretty cool, pretty cool, pretty cool. And I might have to get the fuck out of here because of the Salem. Actually, I don't, because the Salem is over there, not in my radar range. If he even has radar, but I'm not. Go I, I obviously you don't want to test that shit and go below 8.5 against the Salem with a Hayata. That's not something you want to do. I mean, the submarine doesn't have a lot of diving capacity anymore. I would assume. Oh, got a perma here. Pretty nice. The gun DPM isn't bad with adrenaline rush, fearless brawl and BFT, like if you and, and reload mod obviously. Like that's kinda what I would like to play Ayada as um I mean AFT is kinda wonky. Uh pro probably if you go full gun Hayata AFT is kinda needed though, so that's like a 50-50. Spotting that Yamato. No. Well, I mean it's just uh sussing around in the B cap, keeping the cap alive. Uh, I mean the, the Shimmer getting caught like that there by the way, he dies, like he dies to Hayata and I don't even lose that much HP. Shema is probably d like, uh, what is it, uh, torpedo spec while I am gun spec We torp left and right because it's theoretically the Yamato could have turned to the left side there. I wouldn't know. And we're going to go up to the GK to farm him. The last smoke. <sighs> Very boring game. But yeah, you can you can nicely use the island on this map with any kind of ship to z to shield yourself against potential radar covers. It's very hard to shoot the backside of that island. That guy is far outside of my range, and I don't like it. Going to smoke here, receive the GK, still potentially if the Yamato finally moves up and gets a fucking ball sack with actual balls, it would move in. But I guess people are more concerned about their average. And that kind of what I did in the Sherman video is what lots of people do, like just uh, the game seems lost, they just start camping and trying to get more damage. Like, you will find me sometimes trying to still win it, which is... I mean, it's probably stupid. Just focus on farming too. I get DCPs. I get a... I get a torpedo set b before my smoke fades, so I'm not really in danger of him running at me. I would also assume that he just gets DPM down before he reaches my smoke. As you can see here, by the way, DPM is decent, because the alpha is nuts. You... Uh, on unsaturated superstructures, you can get 4.5k hits and shit. It's pretty nice. Now it's obviously saturated. We're going for the fire here. Oh, still 2.3. Oh, you can DPM people. Look, I mean, I'm already on 120. I get to farm <coughs> battleships for free. <coughs> it's obviously nice. <coughs> Pardon me, man. They're just reforming your superstructure for Ed. With Permafire already running. 
can farm a whole lot of damage though here. But <coughs> the moment you have a smoke, it's obviously very easy for you to, to farm people. Uh, if they don't have radar cover, torpedo threats for your smoke, all gone. You can just smoke up. Uh, farm. <coughs> I have something in my throat, oh no! <coughs> Damn, fuck me. Well, now he's deciding to run it out, but flap broadside to my Stalingrad and my Thunder. That's unfortunate. Mm, they missed. We're on 150k damage, man, that's amazing. For a Yada, that's pretty good. Also, since I'm not running AFG, yeah, that's pretty good. Patiently camping in the middle cap, just waiting. It's like it's like one of these DDs where you can't really be that proactive given your torpedo range and your uh, your gun range and shit, and not having a heal being kind of fat and clumsy. So you have to kind of wait until the enemy gets to you. So playing around an objective to force the enemy back is probably the way to go to get high damage. But mm -mm. Yeah, we don't get XP for that, that's pretty obvious. But we don't have a torpedo hit, but we still have 155k damage. So yeah, the guns do exist. Uh, it's not that bad. It's really good when you're, like, by the way, in Kite and the DD runs into you, then it really excels. Um, a second. Go into the spec. Uh, it's a weird spec. I go full... Like, I go turret traverse on top of everything, and then I go, like, full DPM, BFT for the smoke farming, and, like, you have that ready all the time or like it's active all the time and then fearless brawl to uh, get even more dpm in case i'm hard lit by people and i have to fight dds or gunboats um i don't think like the fourth smoke is worth it or the speed boost and the rest is just uh, concealment ar so ability expert but yeah like you could drop these two and go aft probably makes you a way more effective gunboat <coughs> maybe i should switch maybe i don't i just don't care enough about hayata really uh, the torpedo skills are kind of troll um anything else is also troll um it's just like go full gun on it and be done with it so you can see here reload uh, gun dispersion uh, and the rest is like it's always the same um kind of kind of obvious at this point that most dds don't really play that different they're just they just have a different strength level at what they do because they like most of these all do the same or can do the same uh but depending on what dd you fight and what dd you have you're obviously worse and better at it <clears throat> like for example a daring does what you do way better way more sustained way more dpm so you're kind of cucked um but if there's no daring but like a ship or a gearing i mean then you're suddenly the better ship uh, you see or like if there's a small one you're fucked if there's a small one the daring is also fucked so it's like some sort of hierarchy in, in gunboat k slash dd fight cap control destroyers um pretty good matchmaking Apart from the two submarines, but it's like tier 8 subs, so whatever. Sadly, they don't get the fucking shitty I-56, that one is actually, that gets outspotted by me even, I think. It has a ton of HP though, but like, that one is really bad. So, I would have loved to see that in the enemy team, instead of some Salmon shitter and a U-190. But we have only one radar. We have a Marceau, which is not really that big of a problem, because I outspot him quite handsomely, since I run double conceal. Which kinda is mandatory on that one. I mean, theoretically, if, if you if you go full form Delny or, or uh, yeah, Delny, even Alvaro, uh, Grozovoy, um, what was it, Sherman? Like you can drop conceal concealment uh, captain skill theoretically for more DPM because the range effectiveness is there, so you can just focus fully on farming. I mean, it's selfish and brain damage because you can just play a cruiser or HE battleship, whatever. Um, and you're essentially taking up a DD slot, uh, but you're not doing anything DD related then anymore. Um, but yeah, also Elbing. Like, you can drop the concealment on those, and it kind of can be good with the additional DPM and the range effectiveness, but on dropping concealment on a yard and going AFT is just brain damage, because you're not even good at farming at range. So, like, ugh, that's a bit weird. That's. I don't know. I'm generally against full farm spec. Uh, like DDs that are supposedly fighting for caps or against other DDs and have to have decent concealment, so like 6.5 and below. Um, specking them for shitty range farm is like, I don't know, I don't really like it. Unless you're like the cracks, the most cracked player, 
You're just taking up a DD slot and cucking your team out of spotting, cap control, DD spotting, DD fighting and shit. Because you're like always trying to be some sort of selfish range farmer and smoking up 10 million miles away from the enemy team. Here by the way it's 2 DD game with 2 submarines, obviously a 4 DD game would have been way better, you could put 1 DD into the cap for contest, 1 DD into the flank, but even here when we don't get B, the Benham just gets it, it's way better for our team for me to just go into the flank and perma spot them, like look, I keep them lit here, my team has permanent information on these fucks, the enemy team has no clue where I am or that I'm here, so they also ha run the risk of me just death striking one guy with torpedoes. That's kind of like the nice thing about Hayata. If you get into the right position, those are like the 23.7k alpha torps, which means you murder people. You just shit on them. So here's the question now. Do you open up and show them that you're here or not? Because like it's juicy, you can see it's three BBs, you kind of want to farm them. But it could also be worth to stay dark and uh, try to torpedo. The thing will be though that the... Okay, I'll torp the, the Ohio and uh, I'll smoke up. And then I'll farm. Uh, I'll smoke up beforehand and 100% don't want to get spotted here by the way. So um, if the Ohio is focused on someone else, he might just be... Uh, I'm not even going to shoot him by the way, I'm going to shoot the Thunderer. I really want the Ohio to like just be clueless. That's very important here. Like this torpedo salvo takes me two and a half minutes nearly to reload, so I kind of want this salvo to crack him in half uh, and get floods for sure, so we can kill him immediately after. So yeah, never g don't get spotted in this situation. Like just just have the fucking five seconds additional patient. And like here you're going to have the payoff, I guess, because he's going to take like three fucking torps that murder him completely out of the game proc his DCP and now I can kill him. See? That was kinda worth it. Theoretically smoking up and shooting already was already a bit too much of a giveaway. Like you sh if you wanna play it really safe and uh, really impactful then you don't open up until the torps really reach. You don't smoke, you don't do anything, you just wait. Because uh, this is the thing about the torpedoes and being situational. If you can make these fucking shitty uh, Right, they're not shitty, but if you can make these cocky torps hit, you have the impact. Like, I don't know, farming because you're immature, nah, not immature, uh, farming because you're impatient and you want the damage with the guns and like, oh my god, this guy's also fucking dead. Loots. This is a double strike moment on a Hayata. I don't think so, I fucked it with the salvo. Yeah, I cucked, man, I cucked myself. Oh, it's still a double strike. Loots. I mean, that's just luck. Hey, the Benham is here. I can just run into his mouth. Good timing. Um, if I would have sat in the smoke longer, I would have eaten the torps. But the Benham ha already ran away from the cap again. I thought I had a bit more time. Uh, Benham is RPF. Like, whatever. He's unable to fight me 1v1. So, and here you have it. Cool, cool story, bro, Benham, that you got the cap. Really cool story. I, in the meantime, spotted your two fucking, or actually three battleships. Two of the tier 10 battleships fucking died to my torps and giving Fla broadside to my, my BBs that came into the flank deeper because obviously they had me in front so they knew what's going on. And yeah, he lost the game. Adios. See? That's it with random fucking dogshit destroyers always running into the cap. Even if you get it, it still doesn't matter. Our repub is probably gonna fucking step on the cap forever and they're never gonna get him out, so GG's, the cap is gone. Does it matter now that he got like, I don't know, 100, 150 points in cap ticking? No, it doesn't. It really doesn't. Oh, we have him caught here. Like a 300 meter gap between me and him, so... Maybe I can catch up. Speed boost is now ready again. Oh yeah, there he is. And he's smoking, okay. Well, I mean, that's bad that I shot, because I'm actually now in the... Range of the Iwami. They can trade me for a bit. I have to turn into him anyways because the torpedoes will be here. That's for sure. I mean, it's definitely torping me. Oh, we can wiggle a bit. It's pretty hard to hit me with these uh, single shell guns. It's, it's generally hard to hit a fairly maneuverable DD nose in. Mm, can I turn to the left? I mean, I don't need my torps, so I can kind of like cuck him out of the smoke with those. Uh, 
I think, I mean he has RPF, but my carry is griefing him, like he can't leave the smoke on the other side without me having lights on him. Ah, fucked. He has torpedoes ready on this side, at least once. Uh, looking on the nose. Ah, fuck, dude. I don't want to ram, man. I don't want to. I think we can DPM him out here. No, don't slow ram. No, no. Teams, help. Help, team. Help, team. Oh, yeah. Kind of hope that my... <laughs> okay, listen here now. This was, unironically, top 10 weirdest moments in World of Warships in 6 years of playing. I never expected him to just do that. I actually expected him to be up here so he gets a uh, better angle on me with torpedoes. But hey, I could kinda fuck him with my front turret alone. That was... That sure as hell was one of the weirdest moments ever. But I lived it. Uh, I had more, more ships behind me that helped. Could hijack his smoke now. Was a close one though. That was a close one though. But now I have AR in his smoke that is still lasting and then I can pop mine afterwards. So this Mecklenburg is just being free farmed by me now. And you can see the Alpha again. Pretty nice. Fire chance also there. Oh, look at this. It's an implacable. The Mecklenburg is DCPing, so we're like shooting the implac now. Okay, implac also DCP'd. But I think the implac is going to get removed by one of the three tier 10 battleships in any case. Instant fire, very nice. No fire prevention, Mecklenburg. He's like uh, secondary spec. Doesn't fucking matter though because I have a smoke. Oh shit, no. Wait, is that the fucking mech torps? Wait a minute, who's torping here? Was that the Mecklenburg torps? I think so. Can I get a second fire, please? He dies. Yep, there you go, he dies. Imagine I would have gotten the double double strike, it would have been the weirdest shit. Okay, enemy team is disintegrating into nothingness. We have 150k again. Uh, this time because we got assisted a wee bit by the three torpedoes. But um, I might say the, the Benham engagement still gets me, or has me confused. That was uh, weird. I think weird is pretty good. Pretty good uh, explanation of that. Um, it was close that he kills me with guns, and I die. Like, but I didn't want to take the ram, as you know. Like, that's what I said. Like, I hope that he dies faster. And even if I live with a thousand HP, I can still do damage afterwards, which was the case right here now. Oh yeah. I <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know what the fuck was going on there, dude. I have no idea. Zero clue. But you could see the chain reaction of me winning the flank with spotting and torps immediately and their DD being AFK in the cap and the cap is green now and their team is dead now. So yeah, that's why I always say like, please, please, always prioritize the flank, the open flank with the destroyer. Especially if you have good conceal and torpedoes and whatever not, just be in the flank. Um, it also has a very, very large psychological impact on your teammates. Oh, the Salman is going for a carrier. Amazing. It has a psychological impact on your team if you're in the cap or not. Like, since I was in the flank, you could see the three uh, BB goblins or ogres go behind me. And if I wasn't, they probably would have camped in base and never moved into the flank. So yeah, that's at least good to see here. Um, other flank, by the way, won too, because the Nustra probably was in the flank and spotted the entire time. So that's like really good. Um, yeah, won the game. Yada. You can see it's like nothing special. It's a smoke. 
more gun focused destroyer. You play it like any other smoke gun focused destroyer. Um, you're just pretty low in the hierarchy of gunboats and uh, cap contesters because of your fat ship in maneuverability. Smoke is pretty bad. Um, the only thing that is really nice is the alpha strike on the torps occasionally and the trolliness of the guns because it's an IGN ship people don't expect you to have that kind of DPM and then you randomly run around with like 2.5 second reload when you're spotted uh, you have a bit of AR and fearless brawl and suddenly you shit a whole bunch of alpha strike into destroyers um, and they from kite hopefully then so yeah that's it for Ayada um, get it before it's cold because afterwards you're most likely not gonna get it if you're not spamming the game 24 7 every day of the week um, and 2 million is pretty pretty cheap for this DD. It brings something else kind of like a bit new, unique in what it does um, but it's in, in the end it's a tier 10 for 2 million free XP which is it's a steal at this point. It's a fucking steal. Any case, see you for the next video and take care.